Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. On today's show, your boy, your boy Javier, he's got to stop farting around. We got to talk about Cotton Eye Joe. Joe Musgrove having an incredible season, finally talking about that, giving him a little bit more love here in an all episode for all things Musgrove, his impending free agency, whether or not the Padres can afford him, and much more. You know what you're listening to, everybody. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Padres. Your daily San Diego Padres podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Greetings, gentlemen, and welcome to an edition of the Lockdown Padres Podcast, which is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day for Thursday. It should be June 16th, if I'm not mistaken. That is a Thursday, right? Let me just make sure. That's right. It is Thursday, June 16th, everybody. As always, I'm your host with sometimes occasionally, but certainly not always the most Javier Reyes. You can follow me on Twitter at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, or at L-O underscore Padres for the show's account with more Padres-centric stuff and live tweeting during games. Of course, as always, guys, thank you for making Lockdown Padres your first listen every day, free and available on all platforms. If you're unfamiliar with your boy Javier Reyes, one of the places that I contribute to is the website Just Baseball. Great website. I must say, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's great. It's great. That's why I'm contributing. <laughs> they have me. They got me. Obviously, it's great. No, but uh, recently over there, I wrote about my thoughts and just kind of a full sort of dialogue and text about Joe Musgrove. That's right. And it's funny because an article really talking about Joe Musgrove for the website, and it was time about due because he's having one of the best seasons among all starting pitchers in baseball right now. Surprised. Am I a little bit surprised that He's every single outing. He doesn't give up more than three runs. At most, he gives up two. And then he gets you a bunch of strikeouts, you know, six or seven at minimum. And then he's always, most importantly, with the consistency part of this, always going at least six innings, leading in quality starts, all that. Yeah, maybe just a little bit, just a little bit. But then again, that's why I wanted to write about it and I want to talk about it. So in the description of the podcast, if you're a reader and you want to see whatnot, if you like my writing, please tweet at me or whatever. Uh, any other things, but you can check out that in the description of the podcast. Today, to follow that up, I'm going to talk about not just the article and some of the stuff that I included there, but just my overall Joe Musgrove episode. We ain't done that before, man. It's just the, the only time we've done an all Joe Musgrove episode was probably the no hitter. And that's let's say let's use that as a segue into this, right? And that's because of that no hitter, especially Joe Musgrove has just become so much a part of the San Diego Padres. And that's one thing that I attested to in the piece, which is, you know, that's the big question right now is on top of him being good. I mean, if you guys want me to just talk about that really quickly, I mean, just on every stat, one of the things that happened with him this year is that he doesn't have any negative pitch, even in the slightest. If you want to look at run value, which kind of, it, it, it's almost like a, a some slightly measurement of clutch and just what pitches are most valuable to not allowing as many runs given certain situations and whatnot. Like last year, his curveball was a minus 17, which is unbelievable, which is unbelievable. And this year, it's a minus one, which you might be saying, oh, what the heck happened here? But he has all good pitches here, not necessarily one sheer fire wipeout pitch his slider is the best in terms of run value but the fact that his changeup, the fact that his sinker cutter four seam fastball especially um don't even give any positive run value is one sign of just a genuinely well-crafted arsenal right his fastball while it isn't fast he makes up for the dip in velocity by having a lot of movement on it having a and that's what's really impressive um among all starting pitchers he has the best spin rate among forcing fastballs in baseball right now which is awesome which is awesome and what's so funny about Joe Musgrove is when they had traded for him originally I was excited and I was excited in the old-fashioned sense in the old-fashioned sense what I mean by that is the Javier Reyes eye test all right which I talked about with RM Layton on Tuesday the Javier Reyes eye test is just general weird nonsense that I use to justify something without using stats. And it's not just by saying eye test and he just has a good energy to him. I usually come up with some weird kind of uh, aspect or attribute that I liked. And what I liked about the Musgrove trade originally 
And what got me excited was a lot of really good teams were interested in Joe Musgrove. His name got hot at one point in uh, 2020 during that shortened season, albeit shortened season. And you would think, you know, it's a 3.86 ERA guy. Not, not anything that jumps off the page. And then the year before that, a 4.4. He wasn't really all that effective for the Pirates. Certainly not for the Astros this few times that he was uh, there. He, was, he wasn't he was the worst pitcher in the world, right? This wasn't a, uh, you know, this wasn't a Joey Lucchese or somebody like that. No offense. Poor Lucchese catches a stray. But you get my point in terms of, especially for what Padres fans might be used to, right? Um, or from just pitchers that have fallen off and disappointed, like a Chris Paddock or something like that. Like he was, you know, he was a major league starter. He could get you some innings. But then in 2020, obviously, his pitch mix changes. And instead of relying on his fastball, which he did uh, significantly rely on, by the way, that is a, a, the biggest thing. And I'm not necessarily breaking news, um, by the way. I'm not giving you the ultimate analysis here. But, you know, pre-2020, he threw his fastball 37% of the time. And now all the way down to 26%. And he throws his slider and curveball a whole lot more. And that's not to say that he doesn't throw the fastball. He still does, and batters can occasionally tee off on it, right, in 2020, which is one reason people might be worried, 324 batting average against it. And people were hitting it pretty hard and getting some barrels on it. So people were wondering, well, if his fastball isn't working, do we really think that people aren't going to catch on to his, his change in pitch mix? Well, that's what 2021 was for. As he came to the Padres and actually used – his uh, slider as the most. That was his most huge pitch. And then his curveball was number two. And then his fastball number three in terms of usage. And man, let me tell you, those slider and curveballs, just nearly unhittable for the Padres in 2021. Curveball, 126 batting average against. And then the slider, 160, which he threw the most. And he throws that no-hitter, the first no-hitter in Padres history. And I think that that's where the love comes from, right? The fact that there were some people and not to give myself a pat on the back. One of my predictions, my bold predictions last year was Trent Grisham top 10 in MVP voting, which we're going to pretend never happened. We're just going to pretend, right? Let's pretend I look, it said bold predictions. And I didn't want to say Fernando Tatis Jr. wins the the home run derby and uh, the MVP. Like he's great. That's not that like whatever, right? I didn't want to do that. Or Machado wins MVP or Darvish wins Cy Young. I want it to be just a little bit funny. One of the other ones that I promise you I was thinking about was going to say Joe Musgrove will be the second best pitcher among all Padres starting pitchers. And it actually turns out he was the best one, right? That's what's so funny is he actually turns out to be the best starting pitcher that the Padres have. Um, basically, bar none, he was consistent throughout the whole year. His ERA in the first half versus second half was nearly identical. And that's what I think made him become beloved. He's just always, he's so consistent, so reliable. And he's a guy that feels like he's a part of the Padres, right? Because he is a San Diego native. He's stopping by the that taco truck that's naming items after him, right? He's stopping for pictures. I know a couple people who have met him, literally like people that I know that have met him and said he's just the best guy. Like he's so cool. He's so nice. He really embraces the community and all that stuff. And that's to be expected. I mean, he's, he's a San Diego native. And I think that's why this all leads to where we are right now, where he's having a phenomenal year on top of, like I said, with the run value and the fact that his four seam fastball this year, hitters are only hitting 246 against it, which they'll probably get a little bit better at. But the curveball, slider, changeup sinker, the fact that he has a genuine five, six pitches that he can throw at you. Um, and maybe the changeup is the one that maybe necessarily isn't, you know, Nick Martinez is not Nick Martinez level of changeup, but. He's just causing a lot of whiffs, as always, with that slider, with that curveball combination. And the fastball isn't nearly as much of it wasn't a liability the past few years. But it certainly wasn't like a wipeout pitch. You're not going to wipe out major league batters with only that fastball. Right. And he adapted. He got so much better. He developed all of his pitches and currently the lowest ERA among starting pitchers. His FIP suggests as well. He's got a top five FIP, top six FIP, I think I should say by now assuming things haven't changed uh, based off the the time span and whatnot left on base percentage at 83%. So he's eventually going to have uh, give up at least three runs or four, right? He's going to have, but in terms of just overall pitchers in baseball, there's not too many that you could definitively 100% say have been better than Joe Musgrove. I could say probably Kevin Gosman, right? Just in terms of who's been better, not who I'd rather take, Right, because who I'd rather take, you still want your DeGroms, you still probably want your Scherzers and and guys like that, right? You probably want that, but Kevin Gosman, because of his incredible 
um, ability to miss bat bats and the fact that he doesn't give up any home runs whatsoever. Right. And Sandy Alcantara, Shane McClanahan, uh, Zach Wheeler, Tariq Skubal a little bit like those are really the only guys. Nestor Cortez, aside from his bad start against the Twins, right? He's been out of nowhere. Verlander, you've got some guys up there. But for the most part, Joe Musgrove's been incredible. If you want to go by war, guess what? He's tops in that too. At the time that I'm reading, um, doing this podcast for you guys, he's fourth and more. He's been incredible and for a team that needs it. They need him to be this good because of the bullpen issues that the Padres have had. And because of the fact that this is a pitching oriented team, their offense isn't necessarily scoring a lot. So Joe Musgrove, bar none, one of the best pitchers in baseball this year. But then that leads to the more interesting question. And that more interesting question is what happens in free agency? That's the interesting question, ladies and gentlemen. What happens in free agency? Well, there's a couple ways of looking at this. First of all, let's talk about what has been reported. And that was from Ken Rosenthal uh, back in April, like the end of April, and Dennis Lynn of The Athletic reporting. Some deal was offered to Musgrove by the Padres of about eight years, you know, around that time. So a, long, a lengthy contract, but an average annual value of only $11 million per year. So somewhere in that $90 million range. Okay. In theory, that's not bad, right? And honestly, if he was offered that, uh, you know, maybe midway through last year, might be a decent chance that Musgrove takes it, right? Maybe. We'll have to see. But the fact that he kept it up past the All-Star break when other pitchers on the Padres didn't, looking at you, you Darvish, uh, you know, you Darvish and stuff like that, Chris Paddock falls off and we don't have to relitigate all of last year, right? But, you know, that could have happened. But now you look at, kind of who else was paid this past offseason. And that's Jose Barrios, who got a big, big time extension with the Toronto Blue Jays worth uh, seven years, 131. And then you had Kevin Gosman, who got a deal for, what was it? Let me make sure I just get this right real quick. Um, who got a deal of five years, 110 million, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just pull that up really quickly, guys. I forgot to pull that up. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, he got a six year, 125, or I'm sorry, five years, 115 million for Robbie Ray, five years, 110 million for Kevin Gosman. So that 20 million average annual value, Jose Burrios, a little bit less and average annual value, but he gets that extension seven years, 131. And another big deal that happened was Marcus Stroman for three years, 71, which is about a 28 million average annual value value with an option in that third year. I think it's somewhere in between that Musgrove is going to net himself, especially if he keeps this up, right? If he wins the Cy Young, as evidenced by Robbie Ray, people are going to freaking pay you. You know what I mean? Like, And that's possible. He could win the Cy Young, especially because the Padres are a good team as of right now. Uh, so it's possible that, you know, if it's if it's a little bit of a tie between Sandy Alcantara or, or Corbin Burns, right? And, you know, just maybe voter fatigue. Maybe people don't want to vote for Corbin Burns and whatnot, especially because Musgrove's just been a little bit better. Um, that they probably vote for him for Cy Young. And you saw what happened with Robbie Ray. People ignored, and not going to lie, I missed on him. I actually thought he'd be a, a high, that his floor would be high enough. I think I thought he was going to be a low 3-8 ERA. Oh, God. 3 RA guy that missed a lot of bats. Maybe at worst, an Aaron Nola of the Phillies. Man, I've been wrong about that. He only had his first really good start of the season the other day against the Red Sox. Um, and then Kevin Gosman has been tremendous too. So I think around that five years, you know, kind of long deal is what he is probably searching for. And I think that for the Padres to offer that eight year deal, it was clearly them trying to capitalize and be like, all right, let's get this before this guy gets good. So we get him at a discount. That's what every team does. That's what baseball does. They're trying to, you know, you saw the Astros trying to do that with Carlos Correa with his, you know, what was it like a seven, like a $150 million deal that they offered him pre 2021. It's what teams do. Right. But in this case, Musgrove appropriately, Turned it down. Obviously, we're in June. There has been no extension halfway through June. And he's been pitching so incredibly. And there's a longer sample size for Musgrove, unlike someone like Robbie Ray. And in fact, almost almost the same as Kevin Gosman a little bit. Maybe not as good, but Gosman, you know, in fairness, had a really meh, mid, I'm going to say, second half of 2021. And then Jose Barrios, you know, I don't think he's as good as Joe Musgrove. But you get what I'm saying. Want to get a discount. And one of the things I talked about in the article is in fairness, it's not like the Padres are being a Brewers right now. 
it's not like the Padres are being uh, Cleveland Guardians or Oakland A's or Cincinnati Reds, right? They are top five in payroll. So I can understand and considering the results that they've only had one winning season, only made the playoffs one time, why Peter Seidler and ownership and company might be like, oh, let's pull back on this just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, You're spending a lot of money. We don't necessarily feel wild about doing that. But here's the reality for why the Padres really want to try their best to extend Musgrove is because, and maybe this is a bias, which I talk about too, um, you know, because of the bias, because of the no hitter and because of San Diego native stuff, there's just something a little bit more certain about keeping the burn in the hand is worth two in the bush, right? In the case of the in, of the the pro side of extending Joe Musgrove, which I imagine podcast wants him to be a Padre for life, right? Which I would be ecstatic about if that was to come to pass. But with this deal, um, they have to take into account, you know, they have a lot of guys making a lot of money and don't get me wrong, some stuff clears up. Uh, the money for Will Myers, he's not getting extended by the team. I promise you that for 20 million, that's off the books. And you've got a couple other things. You know, I think Craig Stammen comes off the books. That's a decent chunk of change right there. And then the Padres first baseman who must not be named, his salary goes from 20 million to 13 million. So that's like 27, 30 million or so that you save just right there. So that's, they're certainly going to try and do something in free agency. I think, right? We'll see. Again, some part of this might do. If the Padres finish the way they did last year somehow and have another collapse and ownership is like, no, we're stepping back a little bit, sorry, that wouldn't shock me either and it wouldn't be totally unjustified, even though, don't get me wrong, these are corporations, they could afford it. But I'm just saying, you know, there are other teams in a worse case than the Padres if that were to come to pass. And the case to be made is that on top of, like I said, burn in the hand is worth two in the bush, that the Padres don't have nearly that much starting pitching locked down for that we're certain about for next season, right? They've been awesome this year. Mick Martinez has even been pretty solid, right? And Mackenzie Gore has been awesome, right? And he's been exactly what the Padres desperately needed. But then after this year, on top of Musgrove being a free agent, you have Sean Manaya being a free agent and you have Mike Clevenger being an agent, a free agent. I don't know what's going to happen with Mike Clevenger. Maybe you can bring him back on the short, especially at this rate where he's just not, being healthy and whatnot. Maybe, maybe you can bring back Sean Manaya, but I don't know exactly what the deal will look like for him. Again, he's one that I need to see a little bit more from to get an idea of where he's going to head um, for sure. And then on top of that, you Darvish, he ain't getting any younger. Lowest strikeout rate of his career currently at 20%, which is significantly lower, by the way. This isn't like a, just for perspective, guys, this isn't like a 22 to 20%. No, this is a guy who struck out 31 and 27% of batters basically his whole career, and he's at 20%. Now, don't get me wrong. He's been solid this year, but he's going to be a year older next year, and he's pricey. And then Blake Snell, as I joked about in, in, in the article, he's been about as easy to predict as an episode of Atlanta, right? Like, this has not been easy to predict whatsoever, so I will say that, right? Like, it's, it's just he's been unpredictable. You don't know what you're going to get from him. So if you take that into account next year, right now, we know that Darvish, Snell, Mackenzie Gore, and Nick Martinez are the guys. But where are Snell and Darvish going to be, right? And then the year after that, it is only Mackenzie Gore and Nick Martinez. And then you have to take into account that the Padres farm system as currently constructed, although I did talk with Arm Layton about this um, on Tuesday's episode, that the farm system, while pretty strong, is not necess- it's a little bit light in terms of pitching. We do not have another Mackenzie Gore that we're excited about to come out of that farm system to be like, all right, that's our number three guy or our number two guy, right? Gore has been awesome. Let me stress that. He's been great. Robert Gasser, hope he's going to be great. He passes. If you guys were watching, listen to that episode, the Javier Reyes, Javapeno, um eye test for sure. But that is something worth bringing up that it would feel really good that it, heading into not just next year, but the years ahead of that, that you have that anchor in Joe Musgrove and then you have Gore and then you maybe have some prospect guys get called up, right? Maybe you can find some cheap options and what have you. That's totally fair, right? Like that's a totally fair idea to have. And it's, I think um, what the Padres should do, right? I think that they should try and do that. They should extend Musgrove. And I imagine that the way to do it 
is to backload the contract, which is not a foreign concept. Many teams do this to backload the contract to make it kick in more after Snell and Darvish's years uh, deals are done. Maybe next year is only, you know, 10 million or something like that, right? Maybe he makes a little bit more than the 8 million he's making this year from arbitration. And then it kicks in the year after that, where it jump, maybe it's 15 million next year. And then it jumps to 25 million, which might happen, right? Depending on how antsy and how desperate teams are for starting pitching, they might be willing to get into a giant bidding war and be like, Musgrove, you're coming to, I don't know, who's a team that needs a pitcher right now, desperately? Hmm. The Mariners, right? If the Mariners are like, screw it, like, we'll give you 28 mil. Like, who knows? We'll have to see. I doubt that, but you guys get my point. Um, so we're going to have to see how that all transpires. But I think that uh, backloading the contract would make sense to account for Darvish and Snell salaries next year. That way they can build a little bit more in free agency, maybe make some more trades across the room. And considering he probably wants to stay there, at least I hope, given his affinity and his connections to San Diego, I think he might be willing to do that, assuming the money's right. Let's be clear. The total money has to be right. He's not going to take a hometown discount in that way. I think that hometown discount is a very old-fashioned concept. I think that it is correct when talking about the average annual and backloading or front-loading the contracts, but it is not true for being like, yeah, I'll take $40 million total less to help you guys out. That ain't going to happen, and it shouldn't happen because Joe Musgrove, get your money. Pay the man! Before we get into kind of the conclusion and maybe a little bit of the playing devil's advocate for extending Joe Musgrove, or at least trying to, all right, on this episode, guys, let me talk to you really quickly about, first of all, um, I forgot to remind you guys, go check out uh, at LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey to fill out a survey. And if you do, just tell us what you like or don't like about all of our podcasts, mine included, and you'll be entered to win one of 10 Ticketmaster gift cards worth $100. Go check that out. It'll take a second. But I got to talk to you about, you know, we've been talking about kind of, we've been basically talking about job stuff. You know, will they continue to employ Joe Musgrove? Well. Here you go. As the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the people you want to interview faster and for free. You can create a job post in minutes on LinkedIn to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. You can add your job in the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile and spread the word that you're hiring. It makes it easy for you guys. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering high quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? That's right, guys. It's true. It's true. All of it. It's a quote from my, my boy Han Solo. Uh, post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnMLB. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnMLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And then the last thing. Nom, 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 nom. Let me talk to you guys really quickly about a brand new built bar flavor, the mud pie. You know how all your friends, you know, they're they're always coming out with new amazing new flavors and whatnot over here at Built Bar. Well, they've truly outdone themselves this time, guys, with their new mud pie flavor. And for the first time ever, Built is introducing the new bud mud pie flavor in both the bar, the regular built bar, and the mud pie puff. That's right, guys. They've got you covered on all your bases. Whatever your preference is from built bar puffs to the regular built bars, they've got you covered. If you're a chocolate fan, you'd better sit down for this whipped cream chocolate mousse. Ooh, topped with cookies and cream crumble. Ooh. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good, guys. Uh, they sent me one. Trust me. You ain't going to want to miss out, guys. And they're probably going to have new flavors and whatnot throughout which is what's great about them, guys. Best protein bars on the planet. Great variety. Healthy for you. They got you covered. Go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Remember that is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. And we're keeping it moving, moving. Let's do a little bit of a devil's advocate for Joe Musgrove. All right, here we go. 
in terms of handing out contracts, the San Diego Padres haven't exactly been the best team at it lately. We just talked about Will Myers, and we all know about the first baseman that must not be named. They just extended Fernando Tatis Jr., which was nice because you're hoping to save on the back end that if he became a free agent, he might be making upwards of $550 million by the time he becomes a free agent. But then he's hurt and injured, and some people are a little bit wondering about that, but... I'm not going to dog the Tatis contract, but you've got some random ones in there, like your Hassan Kims and your Jerks and Profars, who aren't, you know, they're not killing you. But when you have all this other money that's being spent, you're like, oh, man, you know, when you have the busts of the first baseman and Will Myers around, you know, circulating these guys and you have Blake Snell and Darvish also being pricey, that makes uh, everything, you know, I don't mind Tatis and Bachado. It's just that if you have all these misses, salary becomes a big deal. And with the Padres taking that into account, do we immediately want them to just send out even more money, right? I don't necessarily begrudge anybody who's like, I don't know, man. That's a lot of uh, uh, money for this guy. I like him. He's a San Diego native. We love Mr. Katanajo. But do we want to extend him long term and really make it that we're all in on this current roster, the same roster for the most part, that fell apart in the second half last year, right? Do we want to do that? It's not like this is... The Brewers, I'm going to give them a little bit of credit, where they have a little bit more longer of a track record of being consistently, at least contending. I do blame them for putting them over the top, but say they were like, yeah, we got to extend Corbin Burns right now. Their salary lots for it, and they've been more competitive, and they've been more hitting on most of their deals, right? Well, the Padres, a little bit weird right now, right? Not necessarily there. The next thing that you would have to say is, just in general in baseball, and I talk about this a lot on my show, is that... You want to be kin because what if some other guys emerge that's Joe Musgrove? They did find him and they made a trade for him. That ended up being great for two years, hopefully two years. We're on year two of this uh, season for Joe Musgrove. And you spend a lot less, right? And that you're able to, and for a team with the payroll as the Padres, I think finding low-cost options, it's a perfectly viable strategy, right? But I will say, let's also say, you know, maybe there isn't anybody available for trade. Right, they decide. You know what? Luis Castillo is a big name thrown out there, and Frankie Montas. I like Frankie Montas. Is he as good as Joe Musgrove? No, I like Luis Castillo. But is he just a little bit of a name because he's got solid stats that you feel like you can count it? You feel like the floor is high rather than being like that guy's a stud. That's what it feels like to me. I don't necessarily know if Luis Castillo is a stud or if he's going to have some Chris Archer with the Tampa Bay Rays type of thing where he's got a four one ERA every year, but they're like, dude, but his strikeout rate but his strikeout rate. It's like, yeah, I like the strikeout rate, but at some point I care about how many runs you're giving up, right? Is that possible? Sure. And if you look at starting pitchers that are available in the off season, you know, Carlos Rodon, he's got a player option, right? And unless he significantly outperforms and wins the Cy Young, he's probably going to take that 21 million for the Giants and come back there another year. And if he did outperform it, then he's going to cost more than the $21 million. At that point, let's just bring Cotton Eye Joe back, right? you got Justin Verlander. He's going to be out there, but he's probably going to cost a year deal for a certain amount of money if that worked, but I think he would probably re-sign with the Astros, if anything. You've got Trevor Bauer. Less said about him, the better. Max Scherzer's got a player option. That doesn't count. You've got Jacob deGrom with a club option of $32 million. Probably going to pick that up. They're the Mets. Steve Cohen doesn't care. They don't want to let him go. Um... It's just kind of, or wait, I'm looking at the wrong offseason, aren't I? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong offseason. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. I think I'm looking at the wrong offseason. For this upcoming offseason, Carlos Rodon, same thing that I basically mentioned before. You've got Noah Syndergaard, who he's okay, but is he as good as Joe Musgrove? No, definitely not. And he's costing $21 million right now. So even if he does go off, I don't know, man. I'd rather just have Joe Musgrove. Unless you're going to start believing and say, you know, Zach Greinke and Clinton Kershaw or Nate Eovaldi is a big name right here, right? Yeah, Nate Eovaldi would probably cost a little bit less than Joe Musgrove. That's a route to maybe potentially explore. He's a solid pitcher, but not incredible. Um, and I, that's the thing with Musgrove. You want to have that anchor, right? And then you look at Severino, right? Luis Severino has been incredible, but the Yankees are probably going to want to keep him. And on top of that, he's got a club option for 15 mil. They're probably going to take that. You could bring back Sean Manaya. And maybe your Tyler Anderson, some guys that I've mentioned before, you could bring back Sean and I for less. If the Padres want to go that route, sure. And then if you want to go look at the years after that, or also Martin Perez is a free agent this offseason. 
if you believe really that his lowest ERA in baseball at one point is going to keep up seemingly out of nowhere. So what happened with the, with the, 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 the Seattle Mariners and Robbie Ray, you don't necessarily want to put all your fruits in one basket when a guy is having a career season, when there's been years beforehand that have suggested that he's very much not that. So unless you buy into that, it's not like there's going to be that many pitchers available in the starting pitching market. It's not like we have, say, Jose Barrios, or we have Gosman, and we have, um, heck, Sandy Alcantara, right? Like if we had um, all these other guys this season, we don't really have that. And even the years after that in 2024, if you want to look really, really far ahead and say Alex Wood, Carlos Carrasco, Aaron Nola could be interesting, but he's another one of those high ERA guys where I'm like, yeah, I know the strikeout stuff is great sometimes and he looks great, but I don't know, man. Like, do we do we want to bet on this guy? We'll see what happens there. You know, Darvish and uh, Snell will be off the books. I just there's there's another interesting guy here. Jack Flaherty for the Cardinals could be interesting. I like that guy personally. You have Shohei Otani and Frankie Montas, who we were just talking about. That'll be free agents. Uh, breaking news. I don't think the Padres are going to be able to afford, Sho- afford Shohei Otani. <laughs> That would be that would be nuts. But uh, you know, Kenta Maeda, there's some interesting low cost options here, but there's nothing really that I think is gives you a lot of confidence. Right? Like I think Jack Flaherty is a name. And I talked about this in the article. There's always guys that pop up and all of a sudden the free agent class is a lot more interesting than you expected. Flaherty, I'm gonna call it now, might be that name that by the end of the year and next year we're like, oh yeah, that's the top name on the board. Yes, but that's also projecting. He could also be regressed to the point where he's Blake Snell right now. And it's like, yeah, that guy might get paid a little bit after the next year, right? Like he might be okay, but he's not necessarily going to be this guy getting a giant deal after his current deal's up, right? So that's what we're looking at here. All in all, my take is this. You, we, the Padres have been searching for starting pitching for a long time, right? Andrew Kashner days, we all know those, right? Andrew Kashner did not pan out, gave up Rizzo for him. The best starting pitcher basically they've had since Jake P's T- PV, TV is Joe Musgrove. And that's the big thing here, guys. And this was a, a, a tweet from Dennis Lynn. The lowest ERAs through 11 starts in Padres history, 1.47, Jake 2007, the year he won the Padres' last Cy Young Award. And Joe Musgrove currently a 1.5 ERA, and Joe Musgrove wears number 44 in honor of Jake Peavy. That's my thing. Yeah, we've had some good seasons. The Matt Latoses of the world, right? We've had, hey, even James Shields was pretty, he was okay. He was okay. He was a little fun, and certainly he was more than okay when we traded him. Um, You've had him before. You had Tyson Ross before, right? Uh, There's been some solid starting pitching seasons for the Padres, but it feels like he's really the Padres guy. And in my opinion, bring out the books. He's going to be up for backloading the contract, and he's going to say, no problem. We'll make it $25 million the years after. That'll be the con- the concession is that they have to pay him a little bit more maybe to backload it. We'll see how negotiations fare. But I'd bring him in. They clearly want to extend him for less. Pay the man. Pay the man. Pay that man his money. And let me tell you, dream pie in the sky uh, thing that I would love to see like absolute dream is if if Joe Musgrove is named the all-star starter and like a week before that happens or maybe like a day after they announce that the Padres are like, we're ex- we agree to an extension with Joe Musgrove. That would be the pie in the sky thing. I understand some people might be old fashioned and I usually am this way too, where you're, you're having my Jack Flaherty theory. We're like, someone will be available. We're spending a lot of money right now. Let's not put all of our chips in one basket. I think you can in this case. I think we'll cross that bridge when we get there. That's just me. But if that's your opinion, and your opinion is, let's wait. I want to spread out other areas of the roster, a roster that is really porous in offense, especially when Tatis is hurt, and a team that has really poor bullpen help, a team that just in general has been kind of not necessarily always been proving it, then I understand that. But personally, my take is pay the man his money, ladies and gentlemen. So those are all my thoughts on Joe Musgrove, basically, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed that. Go check out the article at Just Baseball if you'd like. Send it to all your buddies and whatnot. I'd greatly appreciate that. Uh, Tomorrow's episode, we're actually going to be talking about the Cubs series, recapping the four-game set against the Cubs, hopefully by the time uh, 
I'm, I'm recording this uh, a few days beforehand. Hopefully the Padres took care of business there. Also go check out the NBA. NBA mock draft stuff over at the lockdown and what have you um, the ultimate NBA mock draft search that on iTunes and whatnot 50 insiders Odyssey sports experts they've got you covered for all NBA draft stuff and with that all being said guys that about does it for today's edition of the lockdown Padres podcast the only pot that may be better than the pot Dre's themselves remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast from Follow me on Twitter at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, or at L-O underscore Padres on Twitter for live game updates and such. You know what I'm saying? Send me some five-star reviews, by the way, on Apple Podcasts. Wouldn't mind if you're doing that. And until next time, stay safe and, of course, stay faithful. My fire faithful homies, take care. <laughs>